So two weeks ago, the Norwegian league finally started. And when you think of Norwegian clubs, you usually think of clubs like Molde, Rosenborg, Lillstrom. Very rarely would you think of someone like FK Hogersund. Now, Hogersund is a small town with a population of 40,000 people. So naturally, the football club is quite small. However, they achieved a massive success in 2014 when they qualified for the Europa League. They would go on to qualify for the Europa League a further two times, but never once have they made the group stage. So I think it's time we change FK Hogersund's fortunes in FC24, as we are going to take charge of the Seagulls and not only win them a Champions League, but make them Norway's most dominant club as well. Remember, if you enjoy the content, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel as it really does help me out. And if you want to see any club rebuild, let me know in the comment section down below. Let's get this Hogersund rebuild on the way. So this is the Hogersund team we loaded into, and I think it's safe to say this is going to be one of the most difficult rebuilds we've ever done. We have a starting 11 filled with 50 rated players and our best player is only 65 rated in Diara. So I fully expect this rebuild to be a very lengthy process and our transfer recruitment has got to be absolutely spot on. Now I don't think the 4-2-3-1 defend gets the best out of our current bunch of players so we are going to be changing the formation. And for this rebuild we're going to use a formation we've never used before, the flat 4-4-2. Now if you're new around here you won't know we do always disable the first summer transfer window in season 1 meaning this is the team that's going to take us to January at the least. But when we do get to January and we can finally sign some players we definitely need a new right back and right midfielder as the right side of our team is absolutely terrible at 55 rated. Well, as we know the first summer transfer window is disabled but we do have 2 million euros in the bank when we get to January to bring players in. So I can't lie choosing a tactical vision for this rebuild has been very difficult as the squad is so poor on paper. However after a lot of careful thought we have actually decided on the Gengen pressing system. Now this is because the average age of the team is very very young. We've got a lot of high stamina players with really good work rates so I feel like the Gengen pressing tactical vision gets the best out of our current bunch of players and will give us the best chance of success in this rebuild. So we've gone over the formation and the starting 11, gone over the finances and we've also gone over the tactical vision. There's nothing left to do now boys but meet you back at January the 1st. Let's see how we're getting on in the Norwegian first division and use what little budget we have to bring some players through the door. Now, I actually know the Norwegian league starts around March, April in real life. So I don't know why it's not processed in my brain that I'll actually already be in January in season one. So that means it's time to start getting some players through the door right now. So we have made a signing, lads, and it's going to be the only incoming of this transfer window. That's because we've sorted out our right midfield problem. We have converted Yong Min Seo from a centre attacking midfielder to a right midfielder and he's 20 year old and 60 rated. I feel like he can do a job for us this season, meaning we're not actually in the market for a winger in season one. However, we have actually made a signing in this transfer window and we have brought Olivia Brody I think that's how you pronounce that name to Hogersund is a Norwegian right back 18 years old 61 rated we signed him for 530 grand he's actually worth 800 grand this is a really good signing he's got really decent potential and he instantly fixes our right back problem and we have also listed a number of young players up for loan in this window which we'll do off camera so that is our transfer window officially closed we'll be loaning out some young players we've brought the one player in we're now simulating forward straight through to the end of season one and hopefully we've had some good growth from our players and hopefully maybe achieved a mid-table finish. So we're right at the end of season one and we have had such an excellent first season in Norway. We finished fifth in the division on 46 points. We were only actually six points off a European place, which is absolutely outstanding. We won 12 of our games, positive goal difference. The only issue I do have is we didn't score many goals this season, averaging less than 1.2 per game. However, that's better than what I expected us to do in season one and we can definitely build on this now heading into season two in the norwegian cup unfortunately we were knocked out by a glimpse in the quarterfinals 2-1 but once again a fantastic first season as hargus and boss so this is how the team is looking at the end of season one and do you know what we've actually had some really good growth all across the pitch we now have a 71 rated goalkeeper in selvik and diara has grown to 68 rated so the squad's looking really really good heading into season two but i definitely think we need to improve on our wingers as they are falling behind in terms of overall so a new right midfielder and left midfielder are definitely on the cards in season two in terms of stats our top goal scorer this season was sorry diara getting 12 goals and two assists closely followed by martin samuelson getting seven and six and after that lads i'm honest not many goals at all from the rest of the squad and that is something we are definitely going to have to improve on in season two and we have promoted two youth players from our youth academy who look really really good the first one being a goalkeeper hansen 57 rated anywhere between 70 and 84 potential i think this is a really really good pickup and we also promoted david brito to the 
senior team. He can play all across the centre of midfield. He's 60 rated, 18 year old. And this is another guy to look out for in the future. So that's season one boxed off. An amazing first season in Norway. Let's now get into season two. Improve the squad and try to improve on a fifth place finish if that's even possible. So we've arrived in season two and we have got a transfer budget of 4 million euros to improve our team. And as we know, wingers are a priority in this window. And we have wasted absolutely no time getting to work in the transfer market as we have brought in Stradar Apapu from FC Nance. That's another name I'm probably butchering. We needed a left midfielder. We have got one in Apapu. He's 19 year old, 65 rated, got very, very good stats. He's six foot one as well, very athletic. And we have brought him to Hargerson for just 1.6 million euros. And we have made our second and probably final signing of the summer transfer window, bringing in Victor Moreno from Villarreal's B team. He's 18 year old, 65 rated, very, very decent stats. And we have only paid 1.6 six million euros for his services and I would say we have definitely improved our wingers going into season 2 and with the additions of Moreno and Apua in the starting 11 this is how the team is looking going into season 2 and I know I want to improve on a 5th place finish but a secondary goal I want for season 2 is some of these players to reach 70 rated would be massive massive help for me and after the signings of Apua and Moreno we're left with 665,000 euros which we're going to use for bringing in youth players renewing contracts and also bringing in some new coaches as well and in terms of outgoings one player did leave the club in this transfer window. Anton Ludvigsen has left the club to Silius for 340,000. So that's a very quick and effective transfer window rattled off. We've definitely improved the squad in the areas we wanted to improve in. I know we're going to be simulating forward straight through to the end of season two. And like I said previously, I just want to see improvement on season one if that's actually possible. So we have arrived at the end of season two and we are going to be playing European football in season three as we have finished second in the Elite Seren on 56 points, winning 16 of our 30 games and after just two seasons in charge of Hogerson we have actually achieved a second place finish however we have got work to do to make Hogerson Norway's most dominant side as Glimt finished 23 points clear of us this season so we can't really ask for much more in the league we've got to narrow that gap down to Glimt next season now in the Norwegian Cup we once again made it to the quarterfinals but unfortunately we were beaten 3-2 by Viking FK so disappointing once again in the Cup but our second place finish does definitely soften the blow so this is how the team is looking at the end of season two and we do have two players now over 70 rated in Selvik and Diara. Moreno and Apua have had really good seasons in terms of growth as well and Brode at right back has had a good season as well and I'm hoping before the start of season three they'll have all reached 70 rated and you might notice that we have to actually change the formation to a 4-3-1-2 and that is because we have actually got an exciting prospect who's come through our youth academy in Irvid Jacobson. He's 65 rated he's an exciting prospect and when players like this come through your academy boys you do not turn him away we've got him into the team we've changed our system to get him in and he will occupy the centre attacking midfielder position for years to come here at Hogerson and that's one thing I think we really lack on this channel we don't get enough players from the youth academy into our final squad back to the squad and we definitely need to improve in the centre midfield position and the left back position if we are going to be successful in Europe next year however probably worth noting that the average overall of this team will probably be the lowest in the European competition we are in next season in terms of stats our best player was once again Diara getting 13 goals and five assists closely followed by martin samuelson with 12 and 11 and our youth academy future star arvid jacobson got eight goals and two assists so a very good first season for him as you can see once again not many goals from the rest of the squad so that's something we do need to improve on in season three but season two was a roaring success let's just hope we can keep progressing in season three we've so arrived in season three and we only actually have five million euros to improve our squad and with a lot of key first team players out of contracts at the end of the season we might only be able to make one addition to our team in this window so we've reached the end of what's been a very difficult and disappointing transfer window as we have actually missed out on all of our top targets as we just did not have the finances to bring them to the football club. So we've just made the two incomings in this window and the first one is James Balagze of Liverpool who joins us on a two-year loan with an optional future fee of €2 million. Euros. He's 67 rated, got a pretty decent start, 6 foot 2, 21 year old and I'm hoping he can grow to 70 rated this season at least then maybe we'll make the deal permanent. And our major signing of this window was Max Finkergrafer, I think that's how you pronounce his name and he has joined us from FC Colm. He's 70 rated, 20 year old, really good stats for a defender and he's a massive upgrade in our left back position so I'm really happy with that signing but let's check the outgoings and then I'll show you what team we're rocking with Bruno Lietta I think that's how you pronounce that name has left the club to wow um 
I'm not even going to attempt to butcher that name. And he left us for 850 grand. And we also sent a youth player out on loan to Barnsley for two seasons. So with the transfer window finished, this is how the team is looking going into season three. It definitely looks slightly stronger as quite a few of our players have now reached 70 rated in Bertelson, Moreno and Vinkaglaffer. I do expect players like Fredrickson and Brade to reach 70 as well this season. So I'm hoping this squad of players can push Glimpse for a league title and also, I know it's a massive ask, but I would love to get to the group stages of the Europa League. But I don't actually get how it works though, lads, because obviously the groups and that have already been drawn. We did qualify for Europe, but maybe we qualify for next year's European competition. I'm not actually too sure. So yeah, we're just going to simulate forward through to the end of the season and see what happens with our Europa League qualification because I've got a feeling we've qualified for next season's Europa League as our league is a different timescale to the rest of Europe. So we have arrived at the end of season three and we have had another very successful season on the pitch, finishing in second position on 59 points, missing out on the league title by just seven points. And because we've finished second, I think that enters us into the UEFA Conference League because we finished third last season and we qualified for the Conference League. And as you can see, we've actually qualified from our group, finishing in second place. And we will take on Atletico Bilbao in the preliminary round. Athletic Bilbao, not Atletico, it's Athletic. When we arrive at the start of season four, we'll check our performance in the Conference League. But I'm actually really proud of this team, you know, getting through the UEFA Conference League group, not easy at all. And before we move on to check how the starting 11 is looking, there's a small matter of the Norwegian Cup. And this time we actually made the semi-finals where Mulder FK knocked us out 2-1, getting ever so close to that final law, boys. So this is how the team is looking at the end of season three. And we only have one player in the team in Samuelson who's under 70 rated, meaning the main priority for the next transfer window is to bring a striker through the door. We've also got three players now at 75 rated in Broder, Moreno and Finkgrafer. So the squad's looking really, really strong. And I'm hoping, you know, with the right additions, maybe we can add a league title to the trophy cabinet next season. And we've actually promoted another exciting prospect from our academy to our first team, and that's Renato Borges. He's 65 rated and 17 year old. And we are currently in the process of changing this guy from a centre attacking midfielder to a left midfielder. But looking at the team, our best player this season was actually Victor Moreno getting 21 goals and four assists, closely followed by Sora Diara, who got 16 and six. And then Martin Samuel did chip in with 13 and 10 after that. So things are definitely looking on the upper August and we're finishing really well in the league. We're getting closer to a Norwegian Cup final. We've got through our Conference League group. I'm hoping going into season four, we can finally start claiming some silverware. So we've arrived in season four and we've got eight million euros in the bank. So we're kicking off our transfer window with three outgoings. Goalkeeper Egil Selvik has left the club for Coventry City for 3.15 million. Nia Curry has joined Plymouth Argyle for 890,000. And we've also sold Julius Eskerson to Dusseldorf for 1.25 million. And you're probably wondering why we've sold our first choice goalkeeper. If you remember last season, we sent Hansen on loan to Barnsley and he has come back 20 year old, 71 rated, showing great potential. So I'm going to give him a chance to make the number one spot his own this season. But after those sales, we're left with 12 million euros in the bank. So as we know in this transfer window, we're massively in the hunt for a striker. And we have identified Alexander Lind of Wolverhampton Wanderers. He's 23 year old, 75 rated, a fellow Scandinavian, amazing stats. But he is going to cost us a lot of money, anywhere between 7.5 and 8.3 million. But I'm going to try and get my bargain in that on and get this deal done. And we have brought Lin to the football club for 9.1 million euros. And this has skinted us. And we're now left with just 887 grand. But it's definitely money well spent, boys, because look at how much stronger our team looks with a 75 rated striker up front. Do you know what? I'll, looking at how good our team looks on paper right now, I'll be gutted if we don't win the Elite Seven this season. So before we progress through to the end of season four, there's a small matter of checking how we got on in the Conference League. And honestly, I'm really, really happy with our performance. We made it all the way to the round of 16 where we were knocked out by Newcastle United 4-1 over two legs. Just proved to be a task too far for us. Let's now simulate forward straight through to the end of season four. Let's try and get some silverware in the cabinet. Oh my God, I wasn't expecting that. We won the Elite Seren and we've gone unbeaten. 25 wins from 30 games on 80 points. Wow, 12 points clear a glimpse. That is absolutely insane. Wow. Unbeaten. That is the first ever time in FC24 in any of these rebuilds we've gone unbeaten for a full season. That is crazy. But if we look to the left-hand side of the screen, you will see two light blue lines in third and second, and you'll see a dark blue line for first. I think that dark blue line's Europa League. I'm sure the Champions League lines are green. And if that's the case, we're in trouble because that means we'd have to win the Europa League to get in the Champions League. So we finished first. We've won the league. Brilliant. 
right? Let's just see what happens next season and see if we're in the Champions League or not. But before we go any further, as you can see, we have done the domestic double, winning the Norwegian Cup, beating Rosenborg 5-2 in the final. And that is two pieces of silverware added to Hogson's trophy cabinet. And we've had a very, very good start to our Conference League campaign as we topped our group on 12 points. What was actually a pretty difficult group as well. And that means because we've topped the group, we are straight into the round of 16. So this is the Hogson team that has done the domestic double and I can definitely see why we have now got our first 80 plus rated player in Broadway at right back we've also had some really good growth from our youngster Jakobsen who is growing by at least five overalls per season he is the future of Hogerson and Hansen had a great season as well in goal going to 76 rated repaying our faith so I'm really really happy with how the Hogerson team is looking but going into season five we definitely need to start addressing the centre backs they are both not good enough for the level that we're at now so we need two new centre backs in the next season if we can afford it and in terms of stats one once again, Diara is our top scorer, getting 23 goals in all competitions. But Alexander Lind was our best player, getting 21 goals and 10 assists, 31 goal involvements in his first season in Norway. So that's season four rattled off. We're now heading into season five. And do you know what? I just want to know if we've qualified for the Champions League by finishing first, because I've got a really bad feeling that we haven't. So we've arrived in season five and we only have 14 million euros in the bank, meaning bringing in two centre backs might be difficult, especially given the fact we're kicking off our window by bringing James Balagizzi to Hogus and a permanent deal and we have managed to bring Balagizzi to the club for 2.8 million euros but this has took a chunk out of our budget as we are now left with just 9 million euros meaning player sales are inevitable if we're going to get Hogerson all the way to a Champions League final we are going to need all the help we can get we've already had good help from the youth academy loan systems and I want to keep progressing at the rate that we are so I think that bringing in a really good free agent centre back will really help us out and the free agent we have brought to Hogerson is Dimitrij Jankovic a Serbian centre back 74 rated really good stats 6 foot 2 and he is instantly our best centre back on paper and before we get into any more incomings there has been some outgoings and the big one is we have sold Stredia Apapua to Stad Brestoir 29 for 5.8 million euros as we are going to trust a youth player in his place we've also sent out a very very exciting 16 year old left midfielder from our academy in Renato Pinto. He has joined San Lorenzo on loan till the end of the season and he is already 69 rated and one to look out for. And we have also sold club captain Ulrich Frederiksen to FC Mjoutland. I think that's how you pronounce it, I'm not too sure. And he's gone for 1.15 million. Meaning we've now got 13 million euros in the bank to bring in another centre back. And we are going to be trusting 18 year old left midfielder Borges. He's 71 rated, he grew by seven overalls last season. He's got anywhere between 84 and 90 potential. So I'm going to take the risk this season season and start him at left midfield over Apapua who'd hit his max potential and we have made our third and probably final signing of this summer transfer window bringing Tobias Slotsager to Hogerson from Aston Villa for 10.5 million euros he's a 21 year old Danish 74 rated centre back 6 foot 2 very nice stats and he's also showing great potential which is music to my ears and after the signing of Slotsager we are left with 1 million euros in the bank meaning our transfer window is finished meaning this will be the Hogerson team to take us into season 5 and it's undeniable that this team is looking very very strong on paper and now we face a long nervy anxious way to see if we've actually qualified for the champions league for winning the elite seven so before we simulate forward straight through to the end of season five we have actually reached the europa conference league final where we're going to take on atletico madrid our backs are against the wall here this is going to be a massive uphill task to win this final but do you know what let's make a change let's simulate it together and find out if we win it's all here we've got tactical view quick sim let's see what happens boys and we are beaten 3-1 in the final but james Balagze did get on the score sheet for us. An amazing run in the Conference League reaching the final and I really cannot complain at that at all. We're now simulating forward straight through to the end of Season 5 and I cannot lie, the only thing that's actually on my mind is are we actually in the Champions League or Europa League because I've got no idea. Yes, get in there lads, I'm bringing you back slightly early. We are in the Champions League preliminary qualifiers. So winning the Elite Seren does get you in the Champions League but it's not a guaranteed group stage place. You've actually got to win preliminary rounds to get into the group stage we've got Lech Poznan that should be a very intense encounter and oh, I'm just made up that we don't have to win the Europa League to get into the Champions League thank God for that so we're at the end of season 5 boys and we've once again won the Elite 7 on 74 points 14 points clear 
glimpse in second place. However, this year, we actually lost two games out of the 30. So in our last two Elite 7 seasons, we've lost twice in 60 games. That is outstanding. And we are definitely the dominant side in Norwegian football. And that is backed up as we have done back-to-back -back domestic doubles, winning the Norwegian Cup 4-0 against Viking in the final. And that's a further two trophies added to the trophy cabinet. And in the Champions League, we did manage to reach the group stage, but unfortunately, we could not get through the group. We had a very difficult group of Leipzig, Barcelona and Dynamo Kiev. And we actually won two of our six games and only lost once, which is really, really impressive. But unfortunately, just fell short at the final hurdle. But this does mean we drop into the Europa League and we'll be taking on Rapid Vienna in the preliminary round. So this is how the team's looking at the end of Season 5 and we have got so many players over 80 rated now. Definitely got a team that's capable of getting to the Champions League group stage every single season and I can really see this team dominating Norway for, from now till the end of the rebuild. And at first glance, you might see Borges at the left midfield position being our weakest link, but he's actually only 19 years old and he's an exciting prospect, so we're not going to be replacing him in Season 6. I do think, though, it's time to replace Diara up front. He's 79 rated, he's nearly 30, he's not really growing much every single season, and I'm thinking we're going to use the most of our budget to replace Diara with a younger high potential and better striker and now that we're in the champions league i'm hoping we're getting that champions league money and have a bigger budget and so the man we're going to replace in the summer diara has actually been by far our best player this season getting 44 goal involvement in 43 games so let's progress into season six keep up our domination of norwegian football and try and get through the group in the champions league so we've arrived in season six and we have seen a big increase to our transfer budget as we have got 25 million euros to spend which compared to all our previous transfer budgets is quite a bit of money and we kick off the transfer window with the sale of Diara who's joined Genoa for 28 million euros he's been an amazing servant for us but this money is going to help us bring in a striker who could potentially be our end game striker and we have now got a whopping 48 million euros in the bank and the man we are looking at to replace Diara is Damien Pizarro of RB Leipzig he's 80 rated 22 year old and he's actually in a price range between 37.1 and 41.2 million euros so let's Let's bring him to Hogerson. And for just 33.3 million euros, we have brought Pizarro to Hogerson. And we are still left with 13 million in the bank, so our transfer window is not yet shut. If we get a big offer for one of our players and I feel like we can bring in a better replacement, we will accept it. So let's just see what happens in the coming days. So the Elite Seren is on the way and our Europa League campaign has come to an end and we were knocked out in the semi-finals by Eintracht Frankfurt. 4-3 over two legs and they will go on to play Real Sociedad in the final. But not meant to be. Let's now simulate forward straight through to the end of Season 6. And hopefully we've continued our dominance of Norwegian football and qualified and got through our group stage in the Champions League. So we'll all add it's Scott from the future here. And as you know, a couple of weeks ago, I did put a post out in the community sections of the channel saying that I had an issue with my PC where loads of my video files corrupted and I lost the entire Cheltenham Town rebuild that I had recorded and all of my footage for that FK Hogerson video. And unfortunately, I did permanently lose the file which contained the end of season six and the start of season seven, which is not ideal at all, I know. I don't want to ruin the immersion, boys. I'm just going to let you know what happened in them seasons so you're not lost when we come back to the actual video. So in the finale of season six, we once again did the domestic double. At the start of season seven, we made one signing, bringing in Kasunu from Lazio for 48 million euros. And in the Champions League, we would get past Manchester City into Milan, then we would get to PSG in the semi-finals where they would knock us out on penalties. Once again, lads, I just want to apologise. This will never happen again as the issue with my PC is sorted. Let's get back into the rebuild and win this bloody Champions League. So we've arrived at the end of Season 7, boys, and we have won the Elite Seren once again on 75 points, finishing 13 points clear of Mulder FK. We have absolutely dominated Norwegian football for the longest time, and that will continue as we have done yet another domestic double, winning the Norwegian Cup, beating Valerenga. 3-2 in the final and make that I think that's four consecutive domestic doubles lads and in the Champions League we have once again got through our group finishing in second place level on points with Newcastle United winning four of our games losing two but we have got the ultimate test in Manchester City in the round of 16 now if we can get past Manchester City boys we can literally beat anyone in this tournament so this is how the team is looking at the end of season 7 and it is looking absolutely amazing we now have two 90 rated players in Jakobsen and Browder Linz 86 rated Pizarro 85, Kasunu 87. The team looks so strong on paper. And what's going on under the radar a little bit is we've got an 84 rated goalkeeper in Hansen who's come from our academy as well. Now, looking at the team, there is one area of the squad which is slightly lacking.
looking, and that is the centre back slot saga. We brought him in, he's done a really good job, but I don't think he's the man to help get us to a Champions League final. But so going into next season, we are going to put all our resources into bringing in yet another world class centre back. And in terms of stats, oh my god, Damian Pizarro has got 44 goals in 43 games. Honestly, we are just stat padding in the elitist Sierra. This is absolutely crazy. Alexander Lynn got 30 goals and 15 assists. Victor Moreno, 18 and 12. Jakobsen, 10 and 16. Slightly less for him. So that's season 7 finished. We've had a really, really good season once again. Now let's get into season 8 and just focus on winning the Champions League. So we have arrived in season 8 and we have got 55 million euros to improve our squad. And as we know, we need a new centre-back in this transfer window and we have identified none other than Nico Schlotterbeck of Borussia Dortmund. 86 rated, 30 year old, but his stats are amazing. He's full of players styles but it's going to cost us a lot of money anywhere between 49.9 and 55.5 million euros i'm just hoping we've got enough money to get this deal over the line and we have managed to bring Slutterbeck to Horgerson for 50 million euros and anders bartelson as part of the deal and that leaves us with just 1 million euros in the bank and given the fact we've only got 1 million left in the bank this is most likely going to be the team that takes us into season 8 and it's looking absolutely stacked on paper so given the fact that our transfer window is done we are now going to be simulating forward through to the end of our Champions League campaign because as we know the Champions League finishes as the Norwegian League starts and we've definitely got the squad capable of going far in the Champions League but we do have the small matter of Manchester City in the round of 16. So lads here's me just simulating through season 8 ready to dominate the Norwegian League again as you can clearly see we are already doing and I have just seen that we have actually made the Champions League final and we are going to be taking on Bayer Leverkusen who in real life have just won the Bundesliga. So that means we got past City in the round of 16 and we absolutely hammered them 5-1 over two legs to then take on Fiorentina in the quarterfinals who we beat 3-2 coming back from being 2-1 down in the second leg and then we narrowly scraped past Newcastle United 2-1 over two legs to set up a tie with Bayer Leverkusen. So this is how the team is looking now we are in the Champions League final and I really am not surprised to see us in one because that team is looking absolutely outstanding on paper. Because we're not even halfway through the Norwegian League season or we've not even started the Norwegian Cup we're not going to check how we're getting on we've already seen the top of the league and we'll have a quick run through our top scorers our top scorer is Pizarro again who's once again got 17 goals in 23 assists 14 of which coming in the elite series so yeah we're absolutely dominating in Norway again and now all we've got left to do is just win a Champions League and we will be taking on Leverkusen at the Bernabeu and this is going to be seriously difficult because Leverkusen are always difficult to play against in FC 24 so here we go it's Champions League final time Hargerson versus Leverkusen Leverkusen. So lads, we're 30 minutes into this final and there's not actually been a clear chance. We are making a bit of progress on this wing, Borges. Oh, Lind. Lind, Lind. Nope. Oh, he's trying to keep it. We score anyway, though. Oh, my God. That is the most bizarre goal I've scored in FC24 so far. The keeper spilled all like an easy catch. And Lind has put us in the lead. It's a great ball in by Borges. It's headed straight at the keeper. It's an easy catch. Oh, he's fumbled it big time. That is a massive mistake from Costa. It's Diogo Costa in goal for Leverkusen as well. One of the best goalkeepers in the game. And he has fumbled big time on the biggest stage. I was literally just saying there's been no chances in this game. Well, that's an off the ball tackle. That could be a red card. Could be a red card. Let's make sure it's not. Get back in front of him. Oshiman. Oh, that's a big chance. That is a big chance for Leverkusen. And Oshiman smashes the side netting. This guy right back, Brode. I don't have a clue how you pronounce that name. Is it Brode? Brode? I have no idea where you... Broad? I'm going to call him Broad. That's a good tackle by Herrera. Up to Jakobsen. He's not even been in the game at this man. Oh, my God. Oh, Jakobsen. That run real. Borges. Oh, it's 2-0. No way. Our youth academy graduate Borges makes it 2-0 and it's another fumble by Diogo Costa. He is literally handing the Champions League trophy to Hogerson. Jakobsen, that he's gotta be catching that. It's so it's a routine save, really. And it just falls to Borges, who plants it in the back of the net. And Costa, wow, two major mistakes, I would say. But news is away on the wing. Oh, I've, I've dove in. Good save. That's really bad by me. Don't do that. Do not do what I've just done then. Wow. And I've got a corner for dealing with four half time. If we keep this out, I'm really confident we can go on and win the game. Oh, Jesus. Good save by Hansen. One thing I will say about this team is we do not have a lot of heights or set pieces. We've got to be better at defending them. But we're 2 0 up at half time. We've got a massive hand on the trophy. And I'm thinking we just need to keep testing Costa's hands because he's got butterfingers, the guy. He's actually gifted us two goals. Arura. 
Oh, good save by Hansen. They are seriously knocking on the door. Ten minutes into the second half. First real chance. Oh, no, I've been done by Aristiano. Get it out. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. They've hit the crossbar. The legs is at edge of box. Oh, come on. What an effort. Oh, it's straight to the keeper. He's fumbled it again. Costa. He fumbles every... It was straight down his throat. Hansen. Flick it on. Oh, lads. Can we get a third? Jakobsen. Our Academy wonder kid. Jakobsen. What? Oh, my God. Lynn pushes out the way. Oh, my God. But it doesn't matter. We have won the Champions League with FK Horgerson. We've beat Bayer Leverkusen 2-0 in the final, thanks to Diogo Costa, who dropped a man-of-the-match performance. And I can't lie, lads, this is what these rebuilds are all about. Jakobsen, our academy graduate, club captain, 90 rated, will lift the Champions League trophy for Horgerson. And that is another rebuild successfully boxed off, and wait for it. FK Hargerson are the champions of Europe. I just want to say a massive thank you for watching the video, boys. If you enjoyed the content, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel as it really, really does help me out. And I will see you next week when we take on our hardest rebuild to date.